answer goes all the way back to the birds and the bees and fish and ants. All of these creatures have evolved methods of amplifying their intelligence by thinking, toge thinking together in systems. This is why birds flock and fish school and bees swarm. They are smarter together than alone. Now, I'm not talking about crowdsourcing like we humans do by taking votes and polls and surveys. I'm talking about forming systems, real-time systems with feedback loops so deeply interconnected that a new intelligence forms, an emergent intelligence with its own personality and intellect. I'm talking about forming a hive mind. Biologists call this swarm intelligence, and it's a natural step in the evolution of most social species. I like to think about it this way. A brain is a system of neurons so deeply connected that an intelligence forms. A swarm is a system of brains so deeply connected that a superintelligence forms. Simply put, a swarm is a brain of brains, and it can be smarter than any individual member. So let me give you an example. Honeybees. This is about 10,000 bees, and they have a very difficult problem to solve. They need to find a new home to move into. That new home could be a hollow log or the hole in the side of a building, or if you're unlucky like I was, a crawl space in your garage. Now, this, this sounds like a simple problem, but this is a life or death decision that could impact the survival of the colony for generations. So to solve this problem, the colony sends out hundreds of scout bees, which search a 30 square mile area and find dozens of candidate sites. That's the easy part. The hard part is that they then need to pick the best possible solution from all the options that they've discovered. Now here's the rub, honeybees have a tiny brain. It's smaller than a grain of sand and has less than a million neurons. You have 85 billion neurons. So however smart you think you are, divide that by 85,000 and that's a honeybee. You probably don't want a honeybee picking a new home for you. And yet honeybees are very discriminating house hunters. They need to find a new home that's large enough to store the honey they need for the winter, that's ventilated well enough to stay cool in the summer, that's insulated well enough to stay warm on cold nights, that's protected from the rain, but also near a good source of clean water. And of course, it needs to be well located near good sources of pollen. This is a complex multivariable problem. And to optimize survival, the bees need to pick the best possible solution across all of the competing constraints. And remarkably, they do it. Biologists have shown that honeybees pick the best possible solution over 80% of the time. If you were a human CEO and you, and you needed to find the perfect location for a new factory, you'd face a similarly complex problem and it'd be very difficult to, to pick the optimal solution and yet honeybees can do it. Let's think about that. A honeybee has a brain so tiny that it can't even conceive of the problem, but when they think together in a system, they can solve it so accurately they can rival a human brain. How do they do this? They do it by forming a swarm intelligence, a brain of brains that combines the knowledge and wisdom and insight and intuition of the group and converges on optimized decisions. I know what you're thinking, really? These are, these are honeybees. How do they express opinions? How do they combine opinions? They do it remarkably by vibrating their bodies. Biologists call this a waggle dance. Because to us humans, it looks like the bees are dancing, but really they're generating signals that represent their support for the various home sites under consideration. And by combining these signals, the bees engage in a multi-directional tug of war, pushing and pulling on the decision until they find the one solution that they can best agree upon. And it's usually the optimal solution. And unlike us humans, the bees don't entrench, they don't fall into gridlock, they don't settle for a bad solution that nobody's happy with, they find the solution that's best for the group as a whole. And I point this out because the phrase hive mind often gets a bad rap, implying a group of mindless drones who can't think for themselves. That's certainly how science fiction portrays it, but it's just not true. A, a hive mind is nature's way of aggregating the diverse perspectives of a population and maximizing their collective wisdom. And let's be honest, we humans are pretty smart as individuals, but in groups, we're not always so smart. We, that's because we, we combine our, our opinions using votes and polls and surveys. The problem is, polls are polarizing. They drive us to entrench, exposing and reinforcing our differences between nothing to help us find common ground. Swarms are the opposite. They're flexible and dynamic, revealing where we agree most. In other words, swarming doesn't just make a species smarter, it makes a species wiser.
Now, we shouldn't feel bad that honeybees are so far ahead of us. They've been doing this for 30 million years. We've only been around for 200,000. Give us a few million years and we'll catch up. Which brings me back to the problem I started with. We might not have a few million years. Our next big evolutionary pressure point might hit us within just a few decades. Which is why I asked myself an important question. Why can't we humans amplify our intelligence now? If birds and bees and fish can form a brain of brains, why can't people do it? That's what I wanted to know, so a few years ago, I founded a unique artificial intelligence company called Unanimous AI. We build hive minds. And really what we mean by this is we take network human groups, and I'm talking about groups like groups of consumers, groups of voters, business teams, sports fans, and we turn them into artificial super experts that can make more accurate predictions, decisions, evaluations, forecasts. Let me show you how we do this. this this is a natural swarm. Over the last few years, we've been modeling how swarms like this amplify the intelligence of groups, and we've been using those models to create the algorithms and interfaces that enable humans to form similar swarms online. This is a human swarm. It's about 100 people, and they're all working together to move that glass puck. Each of the little magnets you see is a person logged in from somewhere around the world, and by moving their magnet, they're varying their opinions in real time, pushing and pulling on the system until they can converge on the one solution that they can best agree upon. And it's usually the optimal solution. So how can a swarm like this answer questions? Let me show you some examples. So uh, last year, CBS challenged us to predict the Kentucky Derby. Not just the winner, the first four horses in order. In horse racing, this is called the Superfecta, and last year it went off at 540 to 1 odds. Now, we didn't know anything about horse racing. And we'd never done this before, but we said, okay, we're, we're game. And so we formed a swarm online of 20 horse racing enthusiasts. Not experts, enthusiasts. And we had them uh, log into our system, form a swarm, and predict the, each of the first four places of the race. And so here's the swarm predicting the first place winner of the Kentucky Derby. You can see uh, it lands on Nyquist. And we did the same thing for second place, third place, fourth place, and then we gave the results to the reporter who wrote a story. In fact, she went to the Kentucky Derby and she placed a bet on the Superfecta and she tweeted out her ticket, which put more pressure on us. And so how did we do? Well, we nailed it. Uh, anyone who had placed a $20 bet on, the, on those horses that, that the Swarm predicted would have won $11,000. Uh, I placed a $20 bet, won $11,000. Uh, the reporter placed a bet. A bunch of her readers placed bets. One of her readers reported winning $50,000 uh, by betting on the picks of this, uh, of this Swarm. Now, this is uh, remarkable, but what's actually more amazing is that of the 20 people in that Swarm, not a single one of them got all four horses right on their own. In fact, had they just taken a vote, they would have only gotten one horse right out of four. But, but, but by combining their intelligence in a system, they were perfect. That's the power of swarm intelligence. Here's another example. Uh, last year, uh, Newsweek asked us to predict the Oscars for them. And so we formed a swarm of 50 movie fans. Not experts, just regular movie fans who connected to our system online and we asked them to predict each of the categories in the Oscars. And so here's, uh, here's the swarm of 50 people predicting best actress. And so you can see the 50 people pushing and pulling, moderated by AI algorithms, and they converge on Brie Larson. And then we did the same thing for each of the categories, and then we gave the results to Newsweek, and Newsweek published our predictions, which again puts pressure on us. And, uh, and so how do we do? Well, it's interesting to compare the individuals to the swarm. So those 50 average movie fans as individuals were 40% accurate on their own, which doesn't sound great, but predicting the Oscars is hard. Uh, if those 50 people, by just taking a vote, they were a little bit more accurate, 47% accurate, but by thinking together as a swarm, these same 50 people jumped all the way up to 76% accurate. That's almost double the accuracy of the individual members. And what's even more amazing is we can compare to the average professional movie critic the average uh, professional was 64% accurate. In other words, by thinking together as a system, these regular movie fans became an artificial super expert that outperformed the New York Times, the LA Times, the Washington Post, the Hollywood Reporter. Now, those are just two examples, but study after study showed that when people think together as swarms, we can amplify their intelligence by 20%, 40%, 60%, and that's, that's using current technology the long-term potential is likely much greater. After all, if a swarm of bees 
can solve problems that rival a human brain, a swarm of humans should be able to solve problems that we can't even conceive. We should be able to eventually form a true superintelligence. And because the building blocks are people, tapping not just our knowledge, but our values and morals and sensibilities, the resulting superintelligence will not be alien. It will be human, just smarter and wiser. In fact, we might be able to solve some of the hardest problems we face, like poverty and inequality and sustainability. And so the next time someone uses the phrase hive mind as a negative, remember this, if honeybees could observe how we humans make big group decisions, like electing our leaders or resolving our conflicts or planning for our future, they might think we're the primitive ones, but not for long. Thanks.